Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the first of the lessons on the nervous system, and it's about neurons. So neurons are the basic cell of the nervous system. Your brain alone has a hundred billion neurons. And then besides the brain, you've got the spinal cord and all the other nerves. So you've got billions and billions and billions of neurons in your body. And actually, about 25% of your neurons are concentrated in the brain alone. There's a lot going on up there, of course. So there are three basic functions, if we were to summarize. Uh, the first one is sensory reception. Those are the neurons that are on the receiving end of what your body's experiencing outside of your body, outside of your skin. Uh, what your neurons notice within your body, they can sense that and tell your brain. Besides that, you got the other direction, the motor stimulation, going from the brain and spinal cord out. And, and that's going to not only control your muscles, it's going to control glands, it's going to control organs, all kinds of stuff. A any action your body does is basically being controlled by a neuron, and that's motor stimulation. And then process processing, these are the in-between neurons. So when you have a sensory signal going into the uh, central nervous system, you're going to have usually what are called interneurons, the ones that connect the sensory to the motor going back out. And so that's the processing portion. In your cerebral cortex, the outside of your brain, the most uh, superficial layer of your brain, there's a lot of processing going on. And then form equals function. This is true of pretty much any tissue in the body. Whatever it looks like, whatever form the cells take on, that corresponds to whatever function they have. Uh, you're going to see that in the next slide. This neuron is a classic looking neuron. So this is, this is your typical form for a typical function of a neuron. You have up here the receiving end of the neuron, and then you have here the end that is sending the signal along, uh, to whatever other cell is beyond it. It could be another neuron. It could be a muscle cell. It could be a sweat gland. So when we look at the basic neuron anatomy, uh, there are a few parts you should keep in mind. The cell body, is this part right up here. The cell body is where you're going to have most of the organelles that you see in a typical cell. This green dot is the nucleus. You're going to see mitochondria, ribosomes, etc. The dendrites look like little tree branches. So here's a dendrite, 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 dendrite. And the little tiny extensions extending beyond it, as in this part, you can call those dendritic branches. So those d dendritic branches, they're on the receiving end. You have a signal molecule that docks there, and then that initiates the signal into the neuron as a whole. The axon hillock is basically the connecting portion between the cell body of the neuron and the axon, which is coming up in a bit. So right here, that's a, a thickened portion that connects the cell body and axon. So the axon is this classic long part. Now I'm drawing a purple line through those those yellow sheaths, which will be mentioned in a sec. But the, the axon is typically long, has to do with sending that electrical signal to some other part of the nervous system. The axolemma on the axon is basically uh, the modified plasma membrane. So if you were to zoom into this part right here, this little purple part right here, that border you can call the axolemma. And lemma actually means uh, sheath. So it is like, uh, or sorry, husk rather. Um, it's like a husk of a of a, an ear of corn. It's surrounding that axon. So just remember, lemma means husk. So the axolemma, border of the axon. And then myelin sheaths. So these yellow wrappings, they're made of something called myelin. And myelin is approximately 80% lipid and 20% protein. So mostly fatty uh, when we look at the structure of it. And the nickname for these, at least in the peripheral nervous system, which I'll tell you more about in the future, uh, the nickname for these there is Schwann cells. So each of these is its own separate cell. The orange dot is the nucleus of each Schwann cell, and they're made of myelin. Picture that my arm here is a neuron. So here you got the cell body, dendrites with their little dendritic branches. Here's the axon. Imagine that there are socks wrapped around my arm. Kind of a funny image, but the socks wrapped around my forearm here would be those myelin sheaths or Schwann cells. And the, the function of these, 
we'll get into that more in the future. Um, has to do with um, insulation and increasing uh, the speed of the electrical conduction. Nodes of RAN-VA. Nodes of RAN-VA are right here. They're the parts of the axon that are exposed. So, right here, you've got a Schwann cell. It's covering that part of the axon. But in between these two Schwann cells, there's an exposed axon section. That's a node of Ranvier, or Ranvier, depending on who you ask. Axon terminals are right in here. Um, another name I've heard for the endings here is axon buttons, or I even heard someone pronounce them boutons. Uh, but basically, it's the ending of the axon, the termination of the axon. So here are these little axon terminals. And you're going to usually have what are called neurotransmitters released from there. If we were to zoom into one of these axon terminals, let's zoom into this one. Concentrated at the end here, you're going to see little what are called synaptic vesicles. So synaptic vesicles right there. And inside of the synaptic vesicles are little signaling molecules called neurotransmitters, these little black dots. And what basically happens is when you get electrical signals traveling down the axon, at the end of the axon terminals, these little vesicles are just waiting to be stimulated. And when they're stimulated, they then fuse with the end of that axon button, and they end up dumping these little neurotransmitters into the synapse. And they end up traveling to the next neuron or to whatever the neuron is affecting. Maybe it's a uh, muscle. So these synaptic vesicles hold those little neurotransmitters or signal molecules until they're stimulated. And it's usually by calcium, which you're going to hear more about in the future. The synapse is the space. So right where I drew those little black dots, that's the synapse. And the synapse, there's two main varieties. Um, one of them is called an electrical synapse. An el electrical synapse would be if this is the axon uh, terminal buttons or endings of the axon of one neuron, here's the cell body of the next. If they're physically attached to each other by proteins, there is no space in this synapse. It's just the connection of these two. If this is the one that's sending the signal, they would call this a presynaptic neuron. This one's the postsynaptic neuron. The way that these stimulate each other is just simply electrical signals from the axon of this, from, from what are called action potentials, stimulate this one. That's not as common in the nervous system. What tends to be more common is here's the endings of the axon, here's the cell body of the next one. Usually there is a space between the presynaptic and postsynaptic uh, neurons. And that space, you would actually call that a chemical synapse. And it's a chemical synapse because the chemicals found in it are these neurotransmitters, these little black dots that I mentioned before. Uh, if you were looking at a chemical synapse here, you might see something like this. Here's the cell body of the postsynaptic neuron, little dendritic branches coming out. And you can see that there are little spaces here. That's the synapse. And the amazing thing is some neurons can have thousands and thousands of synapses with neighboring neurons. So if you consider all those different connections, the, the potential for those connections in the brain, you can see how a hundred billion neurons can give you a lot of variety in terms of the neural pathways. Because a hundred billion neurons times tens of thousands of synapses, it's amazing to think about.